mansplaining. It's the elusive thing that I think every man has been accused of at different points in time, and it's always come from a woman. Is it a bad thing? Is it something we should not be doing? In this video, I'm going to give you two illustrations so you can better understand what mansplaining is, and then you can decide what to do about it. Hello guys, it's Garrett Prettyman here again at Garrett Prettyman Coaching. There's a lot of things that we can be labeled as that can seem like they're bad. You're a narcissist, you're a gaslighter, you're a mansplainer. <laughs> I have been accused of these various things through time and I'm sure you have too, but it doesn't always mean that it is negative or that it's necessarily true. You see, to be in the position of being explained why you feel how you feel, for the female, it feels invalidating and it makes her feel like we're looking down on her, even if that's not your intention. At the same time, I know for sure I have witnessed what a woman is doing, a thought in my brain, why would you do it like that? And the tone in my voice is definitely communicating that. It's like, if you knew what you were doing, you wouldn't be doing it like this. And so it feels demeaning. It feels like we're like on a pedestal above her with some kind of intellectual power that she lacks. And she feels like it's disrespectful. And here's how it usually plays out. Example number one. Let's say you walk into the kitchen and she's trying to cook some eggs in a pan and she's frustrated. She's like, these things are sticking. This is so frustrating. And we look at her and we say, that's what happens when you don't grease the pan. Okay, she probably already knew that. But in her world, the priority is that it's frustrating. In the man's world, the priority is why is it frustrating? And here's what is causing it. Here's what we could change. And you won't have that problem anymore. So a mansplaining experience in that story is that she was trying to tell you that she's frustrated. You are trying to tell her that she wouldn't be frustrated if she had followed a different path. Now, before the word was made up, I'm not sure what somebody would have called that dynamic. And here's what's even more interesting. If you walked into a room with another man and he told you, man, I can't get this wrench to fit on this bolt. This is really frustrating me. And you said, hey, bro, that's a metric nut. He'd be like, oh, thank you. Thank you. And he'd grab his metric wrench and get it off. So mansplaining when you're doing it to a man is not taken the same way at all. So that underlying issue is what's really happening. We're speaking to a female the way we communicate with males. Our brains want to speak what we think. A woman's brain wants to speak what she feels. And that's what's happening. But our tone in there is what's really set her off. Illustration number two, let's say she walks in the room, you're on your computer trying to send an email and she says, I'm hungry, it's really cramping my stomach. If we turn to her and said, if you could have decided what you wanted for lunch, we could have grabbed some pizza while we were on the town. Okay, again, Captain Obvious. She probably knows that deep down, but in her world, that's not a big thing to be discussing. The moment right now exists of pain in the stomach, and she wants empathy or some curiosity towards that. She doesn't need to know why it's like that. But again, if it was a man, <laughs> he would be like, no kidding. That's the last time I'm going out and not getting lunch while we're in the city. It's like we would see it as a good thing to point that out when speaking to another analytical brain. And so here's what you need to realize. The situation can be led. She's putting herself in a position to be led by exposing the vulnerability. And you as the man are uniquely gifted. You can take your brain and you can put logic in this compartment, and you can put your feelings in this compartment, and you can look between the two, and you can choose which one you're going to operate from. The female brain doesn't do that as well, and it's very exhausting for her to try to do that for long lengths of time. Since you are the one with the brain capable of it, you by default are the one to lead these situations. You can observe what the female is experiencing. You can observe why she's in this position, and you can keep that to yourself because you're noticing your audience is female. If I was to speak to a German crowd who didn't know English and I presented a presentation in English to them, that wouldn't serve anybody. So we need to be aware of the audience. When we see the female, be conscious of the, what's going on with that amazing analytical capability your brain possesses 
and keep some of that stuff on the shelf since this is a female and just connect with the experience. And you will find that the mansplaining issue will evaporate from your life. But do not give up your capabilities of speaking in a mansplaining way because if you are working with another male coworker or a boss or another bro, you need to be caught talking like that for us to be sharpening each other, figuring out troubleshooting uh, issues and resolving stuff. That's how we function. So you're not broken. You're not doing it wrong. You just need to be more present with who is in front of you and being conscious and choosing how you're going to behave based on your audience. Not in a sense that you're filtering who you are, but you're being respectful with who you're with. All right. If you'd like to learn more about what is it to be masculine in relationships, I would love to have a conversation with you. I take men on a journey where we get clear on what does the modern man look like who shows up masculine? You know, back in grandpa's day, it was pretty black and white. You hold down the job, she'll take care of the house. That's masculine and feminine. It's a lot trickier these days, and it comes down to more on an energetic level. What does masculine look like in relationship? As the roles have shifted over time, where females are capable and have opportunity to do a lot of the hands-on things that only men used to do, men are struggling to know, where's my place in all of this? What's the difference, or is it pure equality? We're going to get you clear on that kind of stuff when I take you through my masculine confidence framework. There's a link below this video if you'd like a free consultation. All right, guys, until next time, stay calm, stay grounded, stay present and conscious with your audience. Bye now. 